Welcome back. You know who I am. So <laughs> it's week five, unit four of the Open SAP Circular Economy course. We heard in the last unit about SAP's responsible design and production solution. This is the core of SAP's circular economy strategy, dealing with choices about design and the production of products and services. But once we've decided on design, we need to think about how we source those materials sustainably and responsibly. So in other words, we're looking for a sustainable source of materials that can take account of the impact on the people and the planet from sourcing these decisions. So in this unit, we will look at this concept of responsible sourcing and why businesses care, how SAP can help, both with the traceability and the impact of the material sourcing process. We look at the marketplace for sustainable or recycled or reused materials. We close with a look at how to get started with responsible sourcing. Let's just recap on what we mean by responsible sourcing from SAP. This covers both tracking of materials post-consumer and how they are collected. For example, via disassembly or reuse or recycling operations, and then also how they can be brought back in as new secondary materials. Also, a note when we look at supply chains in the circular economy, they are typically quite complex. They're ecosystems. They're built up of many tiers with many different organizations involved. As an example, let's take the supply chain for recycled plastic in Ghana, which you heard about in week four. So here, for example, we have individual collectors of plastic. That might be the informal sector, but also formal systems run by, say, the city like Accra. The individual collectors are on the top left of the diagram and they will sell to middlemen and middlewomen at a buyback center, who then sell on to recycling companies. Similarly, the city waste collectors will sell to, directly to the recycling companies. These companies then sort and recycle the plastics, which are then turned into flakes, then granules or pellets, which may be done by multiple companies, and then they go to a plastic manufacturer, who will then test the quality of the post-consumer plastic coming in, and then they're likely to be blending that with new, fresh, virgin plastic to create a plastic with some kind of recycled content. They then sell that to packaging converters, who then make plastic packaging, let's say a bottle, which is then sold to a consumer goods company, who fills it with product, ships it out to retailers, sells it to consumers, and round we go again. So as you can see, multiple levels in the supply chain. Now SAP technology is able to link them all together in a business network. So let's look at why businesses care about responsible sourcing. Well, firstly, civil society and businesses themselves are increasingly asking the question, whether it is ethical for businesses to make a profit on the back of the environment and social harm. So businesses care because their investors, their consumers and their employees care and are willing to challenge them if they are not acting in sustainable ways. Firms who are not sustainable pay more for their finance, they suffer with their brand image, their sales will suffer and they can't recruit and retain the best employees. Also, increasingly, there is regulation in this area. We heard in the last unit about EPR, and to date, you can see from the slide, there are 38 schemes live globally, and this is expanding rapidly, both in number and complexity, as we move to complex fee structures like fee modulation. And then there are supply chain laws in countries like the USA, the UK, Australia, Germany, and the wider EU that have been written to tackle human rights and environmental issues in the supply chains of businesses with big fines for non-compliance. SAP has solutions for connecting all operators in a supply chain together, however complicated the process is. So what we're doing is connecting together all the operators in a supply flow and measuring not only the goods and the financial flows, but also the impact on CO2 and the, uh, the impact on the people as well. For example, are they being paid a fair wage? So we have a few examples I can talk to, and there are further links at the end of the unit. So let's recap. In week four, we met Jeffrey Provencal from Repattern. SAP's concept there is to offer technology to support the waste collector communities and the local recycling ecosystem. Now that technology has been built on five years of experience supporting farmers in rural Africa to grow more crops and has been adapted to the challenge of recycled plastics. The technology is called SAP Rural Sourcing Management. That's cloud-based software that is secure, flexible and scalable. We monitor all the attributes of the plastics collected at all points in the value chain, from the collectors to the reprocessing, as well as other important metrics, such as participation rates, recycling rates, gender and diversity, as well as things like access to welfare, protective equipment, 
training participation, and the volume of prices of different materials. So we can show what the collectors are being paid and compare this against the average so that they are not exploited. This information can then flow into our sustainability marketplace where buyers can then make informed decisions. More on this in a short while. Other examples include the tracking of PET bottles collected in Ghana through the plastics value chain as it transforms itself from first to pellets, then into a polyester thread, which can then be woven into a fabric, which then, for example, can be used by a soccer jersey by a German Bundesliga football team. Now, the fans who buy the shirts can then trace the material all the way back to those original picker communities in Ghana. And by scanning the label, they can see how the material used was recycled plastic, and they can see where that material has come from and the positive impact that their contribution has made uh, to the communities that collected that original plastic. We've got similar examples with palm oil to prove traceability back to sustainable plantations that are not cutting down the rainforest. So let's have a look at some of the impact metrics that we like to measure. So first of all, let's explain what do we mean by impact? SAP worked with the UN and Accenture to take the UN Sustainable Development Goals, you often hear these called the UN SDGs, and create a set of metrics that can be used by businesses to drill down into concrete measures that they can take to implement them. These are called the SDG Ambition Benchmarks, and this is a 50-page document that's published by the UN. There's some links at the end of the unit. So in SAP's Responsible Sourcing Solutions, we've started to pick off those which we think we can implement right now, which you can see on the slide. And this shows primary data. Um, most companies right now are pulling in only secondary data. So let me explain what I mean by that. Primary data is where we collect the actual data from the source. For example, it might be a, a certificate of organic produce, or we can check that workers are being paid a fair wage or a living wage. Secondary data is where the information is collected by other parties. That might be surveys or polls, and that summary data is then given to companies. Now, the problem here is that it might be aggregated and it might be averaged. So you don't have the actual data for a transaction. So for example, I might get the average wages paid to workers in Ghana, not the wages paid to my individual cocoa farmer. Let's look at how we can record this information in our systems. So on this next slide, we show an example of a chocolate bar, both the product and the packaging. But this example can apply to any consumer good. So what we're showing in this diagram is just how complicated these supply chains can be even for something simple like a chocolate bar. So let's work from left to right. We can see the first mile is the farming or the origination of materials. Here we record information, say, about cocoa beans from Ghana, cashew nuts from Cote d'Ivoire, milk maybe from a farm, say, in Switzerland, and the plastic might be picked in Indonesia, as well as the information about the materials, such as the volume, the price, the quantity, the quality, that kind of thing, we also record social and environmental metrics. For example, is the farmer paid um, a fair wage? Are those cocoa beans from a forest where we've cut down the rainforest? Those kind of things. From the first mile then, moving to the right, what we see often is aggregation of different material flows. So the beans that from one farm in Ghana might be mixed with another from Cote d'Ivoire, and then this is exported to a manufacturing plant, let's say in Europe, and they're all mixed together to make cocoa mass and cocoa butter. Now the product is turned back into a batch and then it's shipped in a large tin or a packet and it has a product code and a batch code put on it. And then you can start using batch traceability. Now, um, when you get a product with a barcode and a batch code, then you can track it. Um, those chocolate bars are then created, they get boxed up, they get their own uh, batch codes, they're shipped in pallets, out to retailers and individual stores. Now, you can extend batch processing all the way back through aggregation and back to the original grower using SAP technology. So let's look at why that's important, how we do it. So in this next slide, which does look quite complex, you can see how to join the SAP solutions to trace those materials all the way back. So that's through those complexities of aggregated materials batch processing, and the finished goods. So our solutions are shown in yellow, and the data flows and the information are shown in green. So starting on the left-hand side, again, we have the 
um, first mile solutions of SAP Rural Sourcing Management and also in the formal sector, SAP Business One. Both of these are shown on the left. What we do there is we capture within those first mile solutions the material flows and also the impact on the people on the planet. And we have those SDG impact metrics. This is the primary data. As we move along the system from left to right in the diagram, we also capture the climate impact from transportation and each manufacturing step. This can feed our SAP Product Footprint Manager, which looks at CO2 impact. We can then flow this data through any complex supply flow. We can then feed that information into our sustainability marketplace. More on this in a few minutes. So let's give an example to illustrate our blockchain solutions, SAP Green Token and SAP Logistics Business Network. Let's look at cocoa beans in the top row. Often these are aggregated, so the product is mixed with sources from many different farms and processed further. And this is really hard for batch processes to keep up with and gets very complex. But as you heard in week four, SAP Green Token creates a digital twin of the product, which means that all the attributes can flow with the tokens. We can track them, however complicated the process is. And you'll recall the interview in week four, unit five, where I interviewed James Veal, who explained how this works. Once the cocoa beans are roasted, they then become a cocoa mass, which does get a product and a batch number, and then we can trace that using another SAP solution called SAP Logistics Business Network. That can track goods all the way through manufacture and onto the retailers. Okay, so at that point, or any point in this flow, we can feed information into our sustainable marketplace. Let's have a quick look at that now. So our sustainable materials marketplace is part of Ariba. And Ariba is the world's largest business to business marketplace. It ensures you can get the most ethically sourced product from a fully vetted sustainable supplier and allows all employees to design or procure the most eco-friendly product they need. We've been working on this project now for two years and the architecture is in place with SAP's procurement, supply chain and commerce solutions, along with SAP's business technology platform. So we can bring you an intelligent, modern and seamless marketplace. Moving to the next slide, we can see on the buy side, we have started this responsible buying journey with sustainable packaging and recycled plastics. But we'll soon be moving on to other materials such as metals and batteries and we. Moving to the next slide, on the sourcing side, we have many network solutions that help sellers promote their goods to the global marketplace and show off their environmental credentials. So here we have the concept of one unified business network. So that includes our B2B procurement networks, our networks for tracking assets, and our networks for tracking batch materials. Our marketplace will include the embedded risk, but also the corporate social responsibility scores and can show risk, as you can see here on the graphic. So buyers will be able to pick out the companies with the best environmental and social impact credentials and then trade with them. So let's wrap up and look at what you can do next in your organization to improve your responsible sourcing. Your next steps might be to check what information you have in your current supply chain systems. So on this slide, we've asked a few questions for you to think about. That's the end of this unit. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again later.